Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I'm known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with the three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. And I see people are coming in already, so make sure you share this broadcast by touching way down there. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. We come on every Sunday at three o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I want to say uh, too, and that I need prayer, okay? Because <laughs> I am not feeling my best. I'm better today, but yesterday I was a little under the weather. So with everything that's going on, please keep me in prayer. So let me just go over to the chat box to say hello to each and every one of you. Good afternoon. Good to see you, Tracy. And we'll definitely lift you up in prayer. Good to see you, Shivas. Guys, make sure that you're sharing us. We're broadcasting on Facebook Live as well as Periscope. And uh, so at Periscope, you are going to tweet it out, share with all your followers, and put it on Facebook. And on Facebook, you're going to share um, on your timeline and also invite other people into the broadcast or start a watch party. Start a watch party. So thank you so much for tuning in at this this time. Good to see you, Vince. Good to see you. So we're going to get ready to get right into the word. But before we do, um, last week, I mentioned that a beloved friend of mine passed on. I did not submit the name, but I want to say today that his name is Leroy A. Smith, Deacon Leroy A. Smith. He has been a friend of mine since I was 12 years old. And um, he um, left us um, due to complications of the coronavirus. And um, needless to say, my heart is broken. Um, we have known each other for a very, very long time. Uh, he and his twin sister Lenore, his sister Dee Dee, and even his brother Alex, um, who at that time was just running around the house in underoos, okay, at the time that we all became friends. He was friends with my family as well as I with his. And um, I'm telling you, he, what a loss. <laughs> and that's all I could say is what a loss. If you knew him, you would definitely love him. And I will say everyone has been using the word gentleman. And that is a perfect word to describe him. Um, he was that way since he was 12. And as a matter of fact, we became friends, my family with his family, because they were Christians. They stuck out like sore thumbs. And we're like, hey, they're like us. And we became friends um, very quickly. And all through his life, he has steadily was the same. And some people don't know that he was hysterically funny. Most people thought he was just quiet. And, oh, he's such a nice guy, a little angel. He was that, <laughs> but he was hysterically funny. And even now I think about some things that made me laugh. And I meant to bring the book and the book is over there in my library. Um, but he worked on two book projects with me. Yes, God is Real, which you can get on my website, wisefortship.com. And he also um, worked on um, I Rise, Stories of Triumph, which you can also get on my website. And I would love for you to see what he wrote and how he ministered uh, to us. Um, why? And that was a legacy piece. Those were legacy pieces. And um, I would love for you to see what he had to say. So let's go now to Psalm uh, 29. Psalm 29. And um, I'm going to read the entire chapter, but which is not long. I'm going to read the entire chapter, but we're going to uh, focus on one particular verse, okay? And I'm reading from the New International Version. And I've given you some time to share. I've given you some time to um, 
to share with your followers and to also give you time to um, pull it up. And I see we got a lot of viewers. We have a lot of viewers. Now, some people are actually in the broadcast, but the platform that I'm on can tell me who's in the broadcast and who's watching outside of the broadcast. So welcome. Good to see you. And welcome to people from Periscope. Make sure you guys, you greet me um, as you come in. So let's see. Rose Royalty is watching us from Periscope. And Pam Pam, good to see each and every one of you. Make sure on Periscope you pump them hearts. Also on Periscope is Fearfully Committed. Good to see you on today. All right, darlings, let's read Psalm 29. Um, ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, to the Lord, the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over. Let me scroll back. It just went ahead. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, sirloin like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And today we're gonna to talk about peace in crisis. On Periscope, you're, um, you're breaking up. Yeah, that's the only thing I hate about Periscope. But listen, if you want to come over to Facebook Live, uh, look up under my name. Let me let me um, because I do have it on public, so you'll be able to get me on Facebook Live. Let me see. Let me take this off, and then you'll be able to um, for those who don't have the full name, okay, Tony Henderson Mayors. If you come over on that side, you'll be able to see because you know. You can hear clear. Okay. So Pam, Pam, you may just need to uh, to go out and come back in. You, uh, same thing with you, Rolls Royalty. You know what Periscope, it can be a little shaky at best. And speaking of Periscope, I meant to mention that Leroy was always a supporter of me. Um, I went live on live stream over seven years ago and uh, three archive people would be supporting me all the time. And that was uh, Dwayne Reynolds, Moises Suriel, and Leroy A. Smith. So some of you remember him coming onto the broadcast at those times. I just thought about that as well. So anyway, we're going to focus on Psalm 29 verse 11. And that reads, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. <clears throat> And so all here in this scripture, what we see, and y'all, you guys know me, um, the Lord gives me what he wants me to talk about about five minutes before. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I've got to get my little outline together because I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, why you do this to me? But he said, you can handle it. <laughs> so I wanted to share with you about peace in the crisis. We talked about faith in the crisis. We talked about character in the crisis. And I wanted to share with you um, and if you guys can attest to this, if you have peace in a crisis, especially this one, please share with me in the chat box um, if you have peace and go ahead and share this with someone because someone may be blessed by this because they're feeling very chaotic in their spirit, in their mind. But you can have peace during this time. And um, I want to share with you how I come about having peace how I feel so calm during this time, even though so many things are falling down all around us, okay? Even with the death of my friend and also another friend, Dwight Yule, um, who I went to school with, his mother passed as well. So we're praying for you, King Mustafa Dwight, we're praying for you. And so um, this is how I have peace. First of all, we see in this scripture, that God is in control. God is in control. When you're looking at all of these verses, like for instance, um, um, look at verse three. 
the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. God is in everything. He's in our nature. He's He created and made all things. And he is still in control. And when you look at verse 2, it says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And it goes on to talk about uh, so many of the things that God has done. Good to see you, Andrea. Yes, right. You can have peace during this time. Thank you for being the first one to let us know. I think fearfully committed said, yes, I can. Yes, indeed. You can have peace during this time. Yes, indeed. And so um, let me put some of this up here. I got to remember to do that, y'all. And so um, God is, first of all, God is in control. And because we know he's in control, that gives us a certain amount of peace. I don't know how I have to know how he's working it out. I don't have to know when he's going to work it out, but I just have to know that he is the one in control. Because quite honestly, dear ones, with some of the people that's in control in our country, if I had to just look at that, I can see why. Somebody say, I can see why. I can see why some people are panicking. I can see why some people are nervous. Because if you believe that some of the people who are in control now have all of the power and control, I can see why you're nervous. <laughs> But when you know God is in control, see, and somebody may be watching me, somebody may be watching me. I got to put up some of these great. Thank you for tagging somebody in, Andrea. Thank you for tag, tagging in, tagging them in. When you know that God is in control, you can still have peace. When you have a history of knowing that God comes through. He may not come the way you want him to. He may not come when you want him to, but y'all know the rest. He's always right on time. <laughs> yes, indeed. He may not do it the way you want him to do it. He may not execute it the way you want him to execute it. You may you may say, I want you to come now, Lord, but he'll come. It seems like he's dragging his feet. It seems like he's not paying attention, but he does all things well. If you believe that, put that in the chat box. God does all things. Somebody say all things. God does all things well. So we can have peace. We can have peace. Exactly. With them at the will, you should be nervous. Yes, indeed. We can have peace, beloveds. First of all, because we know God is in control. The second thing that we find here in this scripture is that our strength comes from God. So let me go back to your comment sections here. Our strength comes from God. And that's you can see that here in verse um, the last the last verse, our um, focus verse, tw uh, Psalm 29, 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. OK, to, uh, 29, 11 a the Lord gives strength to his people. The strength. Good to see you, Thomas. Good to see you. Uh, the strength that God gives us. Oh, Lord, that's so good, Andrea. God will come through and is still on the throne. Yes, he is. The strength that God gives us, beloved, the strength that he gives, he, he's the one that gives it. It's not because I'm so spectacular, y'all. It's not because we're so educated. It's not because we have the right money, the right connections. It's not even because my father was a pastor. It's not because I've been in the church a long time. None of that. Somebody put none of that in the chat box. And if you have not shared it, go ahead and share in Periscope and Facebook Live. You can touch all the way down there and share the broadcast. None of that is what gives us the strength. We get strength to have peace and strength to get through this situation because God gives it to us. Somebody put it in here. God gave it to me. Oh, my goodness. God gave me the strength. Lord have mercy. That's right. We can because God has given us the strength. We can have peace. And I want to share with you. This is what we're talking about. Peace in the crisis. I want to let people know why I have so much peace. I'm not having so much peace because I'm just so smart. And I just, oh, you know, you just been doing this a long time or, or just because I'm just stupid or I'm not reading the news or know what's going on. I have peace because one, God is in control. And two, yes, indeed, God is in control. And two, God gives us the strength. None of that. Oh, my gosh. That is so good, y'all. That is so true. Who's on Periscope? 
Uh, Danielle is on Periscope. Good to see you. Danielle, if you're watching, good to see you, darling. Unless she's broadcasting and speaking at the same time. And she's been a Periscope for a while, too, as well. All right. So let's look at the third thing I want to present to you. The third thing. Lord have mercy. I just moved my board. Sorry about that, y'all. The third thing I want to present to you is not only is God in control, we also get our peace because God uh, gives us the strength. But the last thing is God blesses us with peace. This is how we get it <laughs> because he blesses us with it. OK. And the last part of the scripture says the Lord gives us gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And I declare if you say, Lord, give me some peace. If you allow God, if you focus on the fact that God is in control, if you focus on the fact that he will give strength to you, you will have peace. Somebody say, I got peace. If you got it, just put it in the chat box. I've got peace. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. God gave you strength and God will give you peace. And we need this peace in this day and time. Because if you take your eyes off God and you look at the circumstances, if you begin to look at the death toll, if you begin to look at, you know, who you're losing in your life and you ought to stop, you ought to stop and mourn, you ought to stop and, 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 and think about the person and celebrate the person. When people are getting sick, you are, it's all hands on deck. You need to work on that. You need to wear your mask. You need to do social, uh, uh, practice social distancing. You need to do all of that, but you don't focus on that. Oh, my gosh, because you're like, oh, I'm looking on that. They're, they're buying even more masks. And oh, my gosh, this is happening. When you start looking at that, your peace will go down the drain. But God will give you peace if you focus on him, if you talk to him about it, if you tell him what your concerns are, if you cry out to him, if you say, Lord, help me. I'm feeling a little nervous. Now, does this mean does this mean you want to scope on the, okay, okay, darling. I'm, I think I'm following you, Danielle. I think I'm following you. Listen, it does not mean, it does not mean, beloved, that sometimes you're not going to feel a little nervous. See, because you might be all right with the fact that they've cleaned out the stores and you can't find no toilet paper. You might be all right with that. Some people are freaking out over that, that they're freaking out. I'm not going to have enough toilet paper. Oh, my gosh. I ain't going to have enough toilet paper to do what I need to do. And that just will flip them out and they'll just go into oblivion off of toilet paper. That may not bother you. Somebody put in the chat box, that doesn't bother me. <laughs> You may be okay with the fact that they running out of food. Lord, they running out of food. They only have one can of beans in there. I don't even eat that. Oh my God, they running out of food. That may not bother you. Somebody say that doesn't bother me. You might even be okay when you hear the number, the toll rising of people who are sick with the virus. That may not bother you because you know some of y'all, I see you on social media, you cruising, you traveling around with friends, like you on vacation. This is not a vacation, y'all. This is a pandemic, okay? <laughs> this is not a vacation. Somebody put in the chat box, this is not a vacation. This is a pandemic, all right? So we need to take some stuff seriously, all right? Yes, we covered by the blood. Yes, we know the Lord, but my friend who passed, other people People who pass, they know the Lord too. Okay, okay. <sighs> Somebody said, go ahead. Just go ahead. Miss Danielle, I guess I need to just keep moving, huh? Because sometimes we just so, 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 uh, so heavenly minded that we're not earthly good. In other words, we just dumb for Christ. I said it. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I said it. Let wisdom have her rightful place. Amen. And yet that may not bother us that there's no food and there's no this and, and, and the death toll is going up. But then when we lose a loved one or when, when it hits us, we may be rattled. But no matter what level we're at, no matter what happens, we may lose our job and lose all of our money. And the reason, let me, let me just tell you something. Let me tell you why. So just in case, that's why I need for y'all to share, because this may not be for you. This may be for the person who you share it with. The reason why I can sit here calm Oh, gosh. Not only has God uh, is in control, and I know that, not only um, does he give me the strength, not only does he give me the peace, but I've been through something. Somebody put, uh, she been through something in the chat box. She been through something. I've been through something. And this whole not being able to find food, I've been through that. 
this whole people getting sick and you don't know if you next. I've been through that. Oh gosh, I wish somebody helped me. Anybody been through something worse? This is terrible. This is horrible. And we're not belittling it. But if you've been through something before and it was shown up bad and God brought you out. Oh, my goodness. If he did it before, somebody say he'll do it again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I wish I had some witnesses up in here. I wish I had some witnesses up in here. If he's done it before. He'll do it again. And it's something about history. And that's why you need to try, God. God, please share this broadcast. Because I want someone who don't even, who doesn't know God, who's been shaky on God, who's not sure about God, who's given God the side eye. I need for you to see this broadcast. Because if you are unsure, go ahead and try him. And I guarantee he's going to come through. Now, I'm not telling you to jump off some cliff and say, uh, come get me, Lord, because, you know, Satan tried to do that with Jesus. And he said, you don't tempt the Lord. That's why some of y'all talking about I'm covered by the blood. And then you go joyriding. I can see you saying that and you're going to go get some groceries. But you go on joyriding. Uh, don't tempt God. I don't see no amens in here. That's right. I hear you. You've been through worse, right? Your husband's death. And I'm glad to say that you're still standing. And when you see certain things happening and people panicking, we're not belittling what you feel. But with the reason why we have some peace, because we've been through worse. Oh, my gosh. And we're here to tell you that if you try God out, if you trust God, you're going to find out that he's faithful to his word. So you can too have peace in a crisis. We talked about having character in a crisis. Who are you? Because when you get steam on you, when you get heat on you, when you get your back against the wall, we know really who you are. We talked about having faith in the crisis, knowing that if God, you got to know his word, okay? Because if you don't know his word, then you don't know what in the world's going on right now. You have no clue. You have no clue what's going on. And you can only get faith by the word of God. It says faith coming by hearing and hearing through the word of God. And do you have peace in a crisis? We see that the Lord will give us strength. He will give us the peace because we know God, the maker and creator of all things. You can read through this whole chapter and see what kind of power God has. More power than the president, more power than the world leaders, more power than your money your education, your pedigree, more power. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He is God. And he can do anything but fail. So we're going to get ready to go ahead and pray. Let me look at some of these comments before we do. Whew. See, this is why you can have peace. I lost seven people between this year and last year, starting with my mom. God bless you. God bless you. See, exactly. Hallelujah. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray. And um, I didn't have any particular prayer concerns other than, and, and don't worry, I'm talking about ahead of time. We did have uh, Tracy Miles, who had already left a message in this feed early on uh, to uh, pray for her um, family and keep them lifted up. I do want to uh, pray for the Smith family, for my dear friend's family who passed uh, who passed away, his family. Um, also, uh, I want to pray for Dwight Yule and um, his family. He lost his mom. But listen, I want you guys to know um, um, when I put these glasses back on, I'm going to uh, take your prayer request live right here on the air. So let's go ahead and get ready to uh, pray. Go ahead and celebrate him and lift him up. And then at the appropriate time, you can put your prayer request up at that time. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we love you. We honor you. We bless you. We magnify you. Come on, let's lift our hands to God. We honor you knowing that you are a a supreme being, that you have all power in your hands, that you can do anything but fail. And God, you're certainly in control. And so we bow to you, the person who gives us the strength, the person who gives us peace. We come to you uh, ready to cast our cares upon you because the word of God says you care for us. But first of all, God, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. Those are the things that we do wrong, the things that we know we should do. 
even if we did not have peace in this crisis, if we did not have the faith to lean back on you and to rely on you, oh God, forgive us and, and give us that strength. Give us that peace. We're asking for it, oh God. We want to rely on you. We want to have that calmness, oh God, while everything's going on. We don't want to be numb. We want to know what's going on. We want to know, be able to do what we need to do, but we want to be able to be peaceful in the whole situation. God, we love you. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for our families. We thank you that we can even shelter in place. We're not on the street. We're not um, without food and clothing, oh God. And those who are, we're finding places to be fed and be um, sheltered, oh God. We thank you um, for health and the activities of our limbs. We thank you that um, we're not in a hospital bed uh, trying to breathe and whatnot, God. And we thank you for, some of us have gone and we have recovered, oh God, and we thank you. We had family members who were sick and have recovered. We thank you for our families. Some of us are sheltered in place with them, and we're so grateful, God, because it could have been the other way. Some of us are, are by ourselves, God, but we thank you for this medium called Facebook Live where we can come together and we can touch and agree, where we can socialize, where we can um, have our concerns corporately addressed, oh God, in prayer. God, we just bless you. Anybody grateful? Let me see through the chat box. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you, oh God, that we are in our right mind. And we thank you that all of these calamities that were listed in the chat box, oh God, that you brought us through. Oh God, we bless you. We bless you that you brought us through the bereavement and death of our husband, oh God. We thank you, oh God, even through all of our loved ones dying, oh God, that you brought us through. God, we thank you that the car wreck didn't kill us, that we did not die in the hospital, oh God, that we did not lose our minds, oh God, that we didn't connect with the person we thought we should connect with. God, that you've been with us every step of the way. And now, God, as we pray for these prayer concerns, God, first of all, we pray for the Wise Courtship family. We pray for all those who come onto the broadcast who are brokenhearted and need direction, oh God, give them wisdom and guidance. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up through the chat box at this time. God, we pray for um, all of those who listen to us on the radio, television, live stream, um, those who come to the conferences and who have read the book. God, we pray for them constantly that you will give them wisdom in the area of relationships romantically through their families, their friendships, their businesses, relationships with the, themselves, their self, with uh, God, with you, God, and even in their money, strengthen them, oh God, in those areas. God, we pray for uh, Tracy Miles, for her family and all of them. We pray for that you keep them lifted up in prayer as they still navigate through bereavement, oh God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen Tracy on every side, Dawn, uh, Mother Miles, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, touch them right now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, uh, as even as we pray, oh God. God, I pray for uh, the family of Leroy Smith, uh, Lenore, Dee Dee, Alex, Mother Smith, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you strengthen them, uh, his wife, uh, Audrey, oh God, all of the children, that you will touch them, oh God, as they, thank you, chick, I was praying for them anyway, thank you so much, as they, um, as they go through their time of bereavement right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We also pray for Dwight Yule um, and his family as they funeralize their mom and are limited in who can attend the funeral. God, what a tough time it is for these families as they lose their loved ones. God, we pray for every first responder, every doctor, every nurse, every nurse's aide, oh God, every orderly, every uh, person who's cleaning up the hospital, God, every physician, every surgeon, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus as they are on the front lines of this pandemic. God, we pray for every store uh, owner. We pray for every uh, cashier and stock person and uh, checkout person, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Every greeter in these grocery stores, oh God, as they are on the front lines with barely no protection, oh God, keep them, cover them with your blood in the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we pray for, who am I missing, guys? Go ahead and put it up through the chat box. God, we pray for um, uh, people in the airlines and uh, all these service people who are serving us, oh God, uh, uh, with the things that we need, 
We pray for them as they serve us, oh God. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up at this time. God, we pray for every mother on this broadcast, especially those who are teaching their children. God, give them organization, give them resources, give them the patience, give them the tenacity, give them the fresh ideas and witty inventions, oh God, to work with their children and not see it as a burden, but see it as a, a, a um, as an opportunity, oh God, for things greater and greater. Oh God, we pray for every um, mother and father that you will cover them right now. God, we pray for everyone who still has to work, who still has to go in for some reason or another. God, touch them right now and cover them, oh God. God, we pray right now for um, uh, Elizabeth's friend, Giselle, who has a COVID-19. Um, she's on a ventilator right now. God, we pray for her. Give her the strength. We pray for all the caregivers. We pray for all the um, the uh, physicians around her. Oh, God. God, we pray that that virus will dry up and die in the name of Jesus. Does not belong in her body, oh God. We pray also for the caregiver at uh, Elizabeth's mother's retirement community who got the virus and all of the seniors there in the retirement com uh, community. God, we pray for all of our seniors who have to hustle about on their own and get their own uh, groceries and do their own shopping and all of that, oh God. Surround them with people who will do things for them and who will uh, see about them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we pray now for every person on this broadcast, every business. Let me pray for the business owners, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that there will not be loss and lack, that somehow, oh God, you will open up and make a way that even if businesses close, that they will get better ideas, that things will work out for the best. Whatever needs to be done, God, we are relying and depending on you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray and touch and agree with uh, Tinky, Tanya, for praying for seniors in the nursing facilities that cannot have visitors, those who are living alone, oh God, and can only rely on and nobody else but you. God, we just pray for them. Come on, y'all. Lift the prayers up right now in the name of Jesus. And now, God, we pray for every person on this broadcast, for their businesses, their places of worship. God, strengthen our pastors, our ministers, our leaders, and let them know the church is not just four walls, that ministry is out here. Come on out here with me. I love you. <laughs> ministry is out here, oh God. So strengthen them, empower them. Oh God, let them preach and teach and evangelize and prophesy more than they ever did before. God, we thank you. And so we pray for everyone who's representing a family here. We pray for everyone who, um, whatever the need is, whatever the need is, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's just that they need peace, empower your people right now. Somebody raise your hand and say, God, empower me. Say it after me. God, Give me strength. God, bless me with peace. We need you, God. We honor you, Lord. We bless you. And we know whatever it is that is to come, it is going to be for your glory and for our good. And we trust you and we honor you, knowing that you are greater than this circumstance and that we are going to make it to the other side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh my goodness. Whew, I felt the power of the Holy Ghost right there. <laughs> felt that. Chick, good to see you. I think Seema came in. Tinky came in. Good to see you. All these heavy hitters and came in the room, honey. No wonder I was I was feeling good. All this glory that came in the room. Thank you guys so much for being here. You guys still have time to share because I'm about to drop some encouragement right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, we talked about peace in a crisis and you can have peace in a crisis. I don't care how bad it gets. You can have peace, first of all, knowing that God is in control. That makes all the difference in the world. If you're looking to man, you're going to falter every time. You're going to get nervous and rightfully so. You're going to be like, oh my God, what's going on? But if you keep your eyes on God, knowing that he is the master of everything you're going to get that peace but you can pray for the strength the strength because god gives you strength that's what the word told us in psalm 29 specifically 11. he gives us the strength 
and God will give us peace. And so listen, when knowing that, that he's in control, that you can pray for God to give you strength and you can pray for God to give you peace. You can't do it in of yourself. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care if your grandmother laid, you know, made the first plate of chicken and your father laid the first brick for the church, honey. <laughs> I don't care if he did it. Bless you, darling. I don't care if they did it. It doesn't matter. You, somebody say me, have to have your personal relationship with God. And I promised you that I would tell you how I have so much peace. Well, that's what this lesson is all about. I have peace because I believe God. I trust him. I honor him. And listen, if you want to get a personal relationship with God, I want you to inbox me and I'm going to tell you how to do it. There's no, you know, hocus pocus or anything like that. It's really just believing in that Jesus is God's son. And I'm telling you the kind of peace that you have is amazing. You're not always perfect. You're not going to, well, you're never perfect. You're not always going to do things perfectly. That's what I want to say. You're not going to do things right all the time. You may still be doing some stuff you know you don't need to do. Okay. But still in all, <laughs> God will help you through it if you want to be helped. And um, I'm just telling you the livelihood of living in him. I don't know how people live any other way. Okay. That's right. Who said that? No hocus pocus. <laughs> Girl, my old pastor used to say that. No hocus pocus. Yes, indeed. You are so welcome. Yes, he will. He'll give you peace in the midst of a crisis. I wonder if anybody else on this broadcast can agree with Tanya. I call her Tinky. That's why I keep stumbling if I say Tanya. But how many people on this broadcast can say she right? Somebody put that in chat. She right if you believe that. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yes, Romans 10 and 9. Listen, read that over because all you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is God's son, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you will be saved. That's it. Nothing else. That's it. And you can just come on over to the other side, honey, and you can have even more peace knowing that you have your life insurance policy. You would be, listen, if you leave here, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You close your eyes here and you open your eyes in paradise. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. Yes, it is. Yes, she is. She is so right. So listen, I'm getting ready to go. Yeah. It's that time again. I cannot believe it. We have so much. I'm a, and I might be a little over. Yeah. We have so much fun uh, doing moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. And on Thursdays, I've decided to come on live too as well to do what I call check in and chat. Okay. It's not, um, it's only Christian because I'm a Christian. Okay. But it's not, it's not a, a you know, Bible thing. It's just talking. But I'm going to have um, a special guest on. And she's going to talk, um, Vandora Wood, she's going to talk all about decluttering. Okay, we're going to talk about decluttering this house. We might as well clean while we're there. Some of y'all done super cleaned. I do too, but, you know, there's always something else to get together. So we're going to talk about that. So join us on Thursday right here at 6 o'clock p.m. I'll put the broadcast up and you can click the little reminder and you'll get a reminder on when we are about to um, broadcast. Love to you. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Now, remember, you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayor. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He's still on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Mm -hmm.